Hello, viewers, and welcome to a new STM32 World Tutorial video. In this video, we are going to continue with STM with the free authors, uh, which we started diving into in the previous video. Uh, I think this one is going to be shorter than the last one. The only thing I want to do is to show a bit about how to debug and how to get statistics from free artists and that is what we're going to dive into. Let me start by showing you the uh, if we look at uh, the STM32 World Wiki and search for free artists. Uh, I actually wrote an article a long time ago about free artist statistics and everything I'm going to say here today is going to be inside this uh, video. So uh, let's uh, dive into how to add the statistics. Uh, I actually plan to start a free artist two project, but uh, I can't be bothered. So uh, I'm just going to continue on the previous free artist one and add the statistics. The first step is to modify our settings in STM32 Cube MX. There's a couple of uh, free artist flags that we need to include. There we go. So if we go down to uh, free artists here and go in and look at the Config parameters, you will see a grouping of three parameters a while down. Oh, what? Here. Uh, generate runtime statistics is disabled by default. We'll enable that and use trace facility, enable that and enable the user's stats. Um, that is the basic free answers. Uh, I think we have to include, if we go up here in the system call, uh, I will include the uh, uh, but here. I'll include the trace. Uh, it is possible to pull some real-time information out of that. Uh, we'll get back to that. But most importantly in here, we'll need one more timer. Uh, if you remember last time, we used the Sysstick timer uh, for free answers and we use timer 14 is used by STM32 but we'll add one more timer we can use timer 13 we'll keep that in mind and all we need to do with the timer 13 is to set a, it it needs to run significantly faster than the one millisecond uh, clock that our free answers take along with so if we take 840 minus one so 840 that will uh, generate a hundred uh, hundred kilohertz uh, clock uh, so that that should be sufficient for this purpose uh, so let's uh, generate the code for that we now have a timer uh, I'm actually not sure if I think, by the way, I think I forgot that. We probably have to enable the global interrupt uh, on timer 13. Let's try generate the code. So we have enabled user statistics inside uh, free answers and we have fired up a timer. So now all we need to do is to make sure that timer uh, update a uh, variable that we can use for the uh, to keep track of our statistics uh, and let's see where we have it we can define that in our main op in the where are private variables they start here so we can have a volatile uh, on-site long uh, which is also UL high frequency timer ticks. Now it's volatile because it is updated in a different part of the firmware. So if we go into our core source, the 
standard interrupt handler for STM32, we'll see that we now have the timer 13 IRQ handler uh, down here. And in here, all we do is we call the wait, actually, hang on a second. Uh, timer. It was 13. Okay. Um, we were here. So it's actually timer. Thirteen. We should call our. We update that variable, and I'm sure we'll now get a compilation error uh, if we try to build project. It should complain. Yes, it doesn't know where that is, uh, but we can do that by taking that variable and declare it in here. I'm sure they got a space for that up in the top. Uh, private defines private variable we can define it there as an extern because it's defined in the main now it should build without problems now all we need is a couple of functions to filter that uh, information into um, free artists and as usual in the free artists configuration there is some some uh, weak functions we can overwrite in here and basically, we configure the timer for runtime tats, which starts with an interrupt timer 13. We set that to zero, and then we get the runtime value. We simply return the high frequency ticks. That should pretty much be it to get the statistics out. Let's try to uh, run this with the debugger enabled. Uh, bup, bup. Yes, we want to do that. Switch. There we go. Now, down here, it is possible to add a window. So we will show a view. Free artists. Free artists uh, task list. Here. Let's try to run for a while. And let's try to pause it. And here we see we have a list of tasks, the default task. There's always an idle task. We need don't need to create that. And that one will run when nothing else is running. And then we have the let task and our tick task. We also have a timer task, which is not really running at the moment. And we can see the status right now is that the idle task is running. Uh, the default task is delayed, remember. That actually, uh, let's stop that. Where are we? Uh, main. Default task will end up in the delay. And the other two tasks were blocked because they are waiting for, one is waiting for a semaphore and the other one is waiting for a queue. Message. Now it's also possible to use this information internally. So let's for fun try to create a new task that display this information in the serial console. Uh, so let's go down here and let's create a new task which we could call stats task start that's task. Uh, we probably should give this one a bit more memory because uh, it is uh, will be printing out some a lot in that. So let's try to stick with that and generate the code. And then go into the main. We will have our start stats task down here and as usual I do have one prepared uh, let me fetch that uh, where 
is it start I think it's here nope uh, pulse start I need to copy this bit oh uh, we go in here and paste the new one instead so what we're doing here is we are defining a couple of variable outside the loop and um, there and then every 10 second we will create an array we'll find out how many tasks are there and then we will allocate memory uh, for the statistics of all those tasks and we will get the task and then we will wait for a print mutex remember we can only have one task printing at the same time and then we will print out uh, the statistics what is happening okay we don't have float formatting I'm actually calculating these statistics but we need to go into project properties and go down to see uh, settings and up here under the settings we can include floats apply rebuild index apply and close now it should compile build project let's see if it works it did let's try to where are we here there let's try to flash it So after 10 seconds, it should come out and show the statistics. Let's see if that works. There you go. So you can see we have the task, it print the task, different tasks, how much use, how much time they spent in that task. And you can see the let task spent a little time and the stats task spent a little time. The high order mark over here is interesting. That show how much memory is used or rather how much is left so you see the tick task actually is at 12 that means there's only 12 byte from actually running out of memory in that task so it might be a good idea to go in here and look at our test tasks and see it's actually 128 maybe we should set that at 196 instead and try to generate the code and flash a new version and let's see how that comes out there you go you can see now the tick task we got 80 bytes available so the benefit of this approach here you don't have to print it out you can you can do it through the debugger is you can keep track of the memory usage of each task one of the and you can see the stat task actually only at 46 so even though we set that at 256 it is using quite a lot of that memory and it's quite obvious this printf we're doing here with floating point and what have you not is taking quite a lot of uh, temporary memory inside this loop so you need if if I mean in my experience which is admittedly rather limited uh, with free artists if you run into problems and crashes it is usually because a task ran out of uh, temporary memory and um, that is worth uh, paying attention to so that's pretty much all I wanted to do in this uh, particular video. Uh, just show how to gather uh, statistical information from free authors, free authors and how to show that information uh, and how to display that information. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next video, I'll build further on this uh, project. And uh, I think what I will do in the next video is I'll actually, if you remember some videos back, I did a sine wave calculation uh, where I, uh, in the callback uh, of a DMA transfer, I would calculate new data points in a sine wave. And I think that would be an ideal project to do in, um, with free answers. So have the callback execute a task in free answers and have that task calculate the sine wave details. That's about it. As usual, if you feel that you got anything out of this video, please do like and subscribe down below. And I love receiving comments. Have a wonderful rest of the day.